Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another session of data structures and algorithms using C++. My name is Dr. Bilal Wajid. This particular lecture, we're going to learn how to read from a file and to write to a file. So it's worthwhile to look at the book analogy. So whenever you want to read a particular book, you search for a particular book. Once you've found it, you open it, you read it line by line, and when you're done, you close the book. Now, remember the input-output stream that we've been using constantly, where the C out is used to print on the screen and C in is used to take an input from the keyboard? Well, in a similar fashion, like the input-output stream, where you needed a particular package, you need a package, the right package, for reading and writing files. And the name of that package is the file stream. So whenever you want to do something like this, you need to include this in your program. Now, in order for you to read a particular file, you need something what is called an input file stream. So input here is an instance of the input file stream. And this is the name of the file. So that could be input.txt or, you know, log.txt or marks.txt. It could be really anything you want. And similarly, if you want to write to another file, you need something called an output file stream instance. So output here, it could have any name. I'm just using the name output for uh, convenience and for teaching purposes. So the output is an instance of the output file stream, and this is the name of the file. So if you want to, let's say, write files, you just replace this with the proper name. So log.txt, so then this is going to be, so if this file is not initially present already, it will create a file in the same folder as this program. And the name of the file, if you write log.txt, then the name of the file will be log.txt. So remember how you use the input file stream and you were able to use the C out to print Salaam students on the monitor because now the C out was actually an instance of the output stream. Now because output is an instance of the output file stream, you're just going to use it in exactly the same way. So output, you know, these do back arrows and Salaam students is now actually going to put Salaam students within the log.txt file. And when you'll open this up, the first statement that you would see would be this one. So it works really in a very similar way to the input-output stream. And obviously, once you're done, you have to close the file before exiting. So output.close closes the file. Now, how to read files? Well, it's equally easy. Remember, in the using the ins input output stream, you were using the C input to store these elements, like whatever you get from the keyboard to a variable A. Now, you can do that using the input file stream as well. So you have an instance of you need this include file stream. Now, the input here is an instance of the input file stream. And it's going to take in input not from the keyboard, but whatever the name of this file is. Okay? So the first thing you have to check, you know, looking back at the book and all analogy, if the you were able to find the book. <coughs> and if you're able to find the book, you should open it. So what input.isopen does, it checks if the file that you mentioned, you were able to open it. Now, the is open actually returns a boolean output. It's one if it is able to open the file and it's zero if it's not. You should be able to store this in a boolean variable and only run the rest of the program if you're able to find the file. If you're not able to find the file, you can just, you know, throw an exception and say that the file that you mentioned is just not available or it's not present in the current folder, right? But let's say you were able to actually get the file. In that case, you know, remember the analogy, 
open the book so now you can read the file line by line and what this statement does it actually looks at the input file stream right this is an instance of the input file stream it takes in a line from the file and stores it in data now data is a string now it does that but it also returns a boolean variable 1 and 0 1 means it was successfully able to do that 0 means it's not in fact you can use this very usefully because at the end when it's done reading all the files it reaches what is referred to as the end of file and when it does that it returns a 0 because it can't read any other files right it reaches the end of the book per se so you should continue as long as you can you know retrieve a particular string from the file and you can just print it on the monitor screen to see if it actually works and you can continue doing this until it goes to the next line and then reads the next line and then reads the line up until there is no other line to read in the file and the file reaches its end which otherwise is known as the EOF or the end of file now once you're de reading all the file you, you should remember to close it before exiting right so this is the whole program of how to read a particular file right so let's go back at the book analogy remember the searching for a book open the book read it line by line and close the book well we are doing pretty much similar elements uh, steps using our file stream so you have this input file stream input and this whatever the name of the pro file you write it actually searches for that file you should always check if the file was present and is opened and once it is open and it confirms you can just read it line by line using this get line statement and once you're done reading it you can just finish it and close the file now as an example <coughs> here is my code i've actually kind of like linked it with our previous lecture on how to use you know get directly parameters from the command line interface so this is our input file name and output file name right I'm expecting a program where I tell it there is an input and there is an output what the function really does what this program really does it reads whatever is in the input it's like a copy paste right it copies whatever is in one file and pastes it into another file and you can see here well uh, this is the input file stream which is stored as an argument v1 output file stream and well you know this is what we discussed right it co gets it line by line it stores it in data data here is our string and it just not only it prints it on the screen so that we can visually see it but it also makes it into a new file right so let's try running the program here is the program let's say I write right so it's lecture 22 so if I write lecture 22 and I press enter it says sorry I am expecting three parameters right so so then I just write input dot text that's actually a file present in the same folder and then I write output dot text okay so when I press enter so this was our input dot text you can see here this was our input text it says hello world Bilal Wajid university is closed so you enjoy and we see the same statement is actually printed here but let's look at uh, the output and the output is actually also the same right it's it'll actually put the same things in the output right so if I just go back this is our output and it shows here that the input and the output look exactly the same right so I'm clicking on input I'm clicking on output they're really the same but let's do something you know extended let's go beyond that because lecture 22 and input are present in the same folder 
But what if you want to access a file which is, let's say, not in the documents folder, but it's in the desktop folder? How do you do this, right? So I want to now give this as an input, and it's present in the desktop. So I do this. This time, I do write lecture 22. But now this input is you know, is present in the same folder as lecture 22. And this is this long folder. But now I have want to give it as an input to a file which is present in the desktop. Well, you can do that in Linux using the home, the name of the user which is using it, let's say, uh, and then desktop. And then I'm giving it input 2.txt. Now, in other words, and then I'm, let's say, giving an output log.txt. Now, this was input 2.txt. You can go here. This is Salam Dunya, Bilal Wajid, Idara Band, so enjoy. That's pretty much a little Urdu of our English here, which is hello. So this is Salam. World, I've replaced with Dunya. Bilal Wajid, the names are always the same, whether whatever language you're going to talk about. So they come as it is. University is Idara, and closed is Band. So it's closed. Enjoy, I've really kept as enjoy, so, right? So when I run this program, you see the same thing is printed. And if you go to the folder here, <coughs> you see that this new file is created, which actually contains the same copy paste of input dot two dot text. <coughs> so remember this, whenever you want to give in a file which is not present as the same folder as the program itself, you can do that. It's just that you have to give the complete path of that file, right? Because Linux directories start from home per se by default. I mean, that's one of the fundamental com starts. So you have to tell it, look within the home folder, within that Bilal folder, within that desktop, within that you will find input.txt. Okay? So together, lecture 21 and 22 helped you, lecture 21 helped you to learn how to use arguments by passing in arguments directly using the command line interface. And lecture 22 now teaches you how to read files and write files. And we would be using this extensively in data structures because there's a whole, because data structures is all about using much larger data sets, which you can't just take in from, uh, let's say, the you know, user by ty asking him to type from the keyboard, right? So um, I hope you like this lecture. If you do, press the thumbs up bu button and also, uh, you know, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified for new videos. Thank you very much. Up until next time, bye-bye.